Thank you for this today. So come on into your mountain pose. Feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead. Sitting bones down, ribs in and up, get that core active, shoulders relaxed. And then inhale, arms at shoulder level, crown high. Exhale, hands to your chest, elbows a little bit back. Stretch way out to the front, and then exhale your hands behind you and clasp the fingers. Push the hands down as you lift your heart, and then pivot at your hips coming over into your forearm. Get that back of your body stretching just a little bit. Tuck in your chin, kind of move your neck around. Hands coming up toward the ceiling, toward your head. Lift your sitting bones and relax. Keep breathing. And then with your chin in, lift your ribs, sitting bones down, and slowly work your way back up. Lift your heart and come into that upper body for your back bend. Shoulders down, head reaching away. And again, just a few breaths there, lengthening through your spine. Spread your toes out, no breathing. And then inhale up, release your arms, and take a moment feeling your body warming up just a little bit, especially through the spine. And again, we're going to do that forward bend, backward bend. So bring your arms out. Exhale, hands to your chest. Stretch to the front, shoulders down. And again, hands behind, clasp the other way. Stretch your spine as you breathe in and up. And pivot over as you come down. And again, just maximize or minimize. Remember, personal practice. Do what's right for your body this morning. Tuck in your chin, bring your hands toward your head. And again, slowly work your way up. And lift your heart again, stretching your spine as you come into the upper body back bend. And lengthen from your toes all the way through the top of your head. And again, inhale coming up and release. Take a moment, feel your spine. A little warmer. And again, inhaling, arms out to the side, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders. Keep those shoulders down. Clasp your hands and bring your arms back by your ears. Sitting bones down, ribs in, and lean to the side, no twisting, so make sure that top shoulder doesn't lean forward. So get the ribs stretching apart, press your foot down that you're leaning away from for extra stretch on that side. Breathe, relax. And then inhale back up, shoulders staying down, and hands switching around. And again, lengthen through the crown, and exhale to the opposite side. Stretch it out, press into the foot, maximize that side opening through the ribs along the oblique. Keep breathing, and relax. And again, on the inhalation, come up and release back into that. Side should be a little more stretched out, and we'll do our twists. So remember, get those bones along your spine separating, base of your spine and base of your skull reaching. Arms out, palms up, arms over your shoulders, clasp your elbows, pull the arms by your ears, and shoulders down. Ribs in and up, lengthen your spine, and exhale for your twist. Knees bent maybe a little bit, and stretch. Pivot on over, and relax. So come into that twist forward bend as deeply or not as your body looks. And again, a few breaths here. Kind of lift your sitting bones, relax through the shoulders, through the arms. Move your head around maybe a little bit. And then slowly work your way up in the twist into that upper body for the back bend. And remember, don't overdo that low back while you're twisting. So chest high, elbows back, look up, and get that heart area, shoulder blade area into the back bend. And then inhale up, exhale to the center, and switch your arms around. And again, lengthen your spine, get that open, and exhale, and twist. Breathe in, 
and exhale over. So again, deepen into this forward bend in this twist as much as you like. Relax, kind of let that spine lengthen as it's pulled with gravity over the top of your head. And then again, inhale and come up. Chest high, elbows back, shoulders down. And again, just the upper body bending into that back bend, being gentle on the lower back. Inhale to the top, exhale to the center, arms up, keep them right at arm level or at shoulder level, ear level, and shoulders down. Pivot at your hips, so push the sitting bones back and the crown forward, keep your body as flat and parallel to the floor as you can. Lengthen your spine and then just drop into ragdoll. Take a moment there, breathing, relaxing, deepening. You can pull in with your hands behind your legs if you like it or not. And then arms back to the front and one more wind up. See if you can feel those bones and along your spine moving into place as you come back up. And shoulders back and down into mat and pose. So take a moment, focus on how your body is feeling this morning. And we're going to start with a little side motion with our triangle that we did the other day. So get your heels kind of along a parallel line along the back of your mat or something if you're on the floor. Toes straight ahead and remember inseam length from your ankle bone to your upper hip joint is the same as between your ankle bones if you want the full realized pose otherwise a little closer is fine. So get your feet positioned and allow your whole body to be open to the front. Remember, we don't want to be twisting when we move our feet in triangles. So shoulders, hips, face the front, no matter what. Arms up at shoulder level. Turn one foot 90 degrees. So get that side of your foot kind of parallel to the back of the mat or parallel with where your heels were. And then the back foot, remember, heel back, toes forward so that the knee goes the same direction the toes are pointing. And then that joint at the top of the thigh, the hip joint, that's where we're moving from. So push, push, push straight. The further you push straight out, the further your hands will go down toward your leg. So hands pop parallel to the front of your body and then pivot. So your shoulders and your hips stay facing the front, your arms right across from each other as much as you can, and allow yourself to keep reaching through your head, through your sitting bones, so that your spine keeps lengthening as you move into your triangle side bend. So this side is stretching open. There's a little contraction on this other side. If you want to make sure you're opening your chest, you can bring that arm behind you or all the way down to your hip to keep that whole front of your body nice and open. And this hand can be wherever it is. It can be on your leg or the floor or a block or just dangling. It doesn't really matter because it's not supporting you. It's just position. And then if your arm came down, bring it back up. And then leaning with that hand in the air, pull yourself back, arms at shoulder level, palms to the floor, feet to the front, star, energize it, and release. So feel more circulation and just focus inward. So of course we're going to do exactly the same thing to the other side. Check that your feet are still parallel and your hips and shoulders remain to the front. Arms out, shoulder level. Keep the shoulder blades down, the crown high. Turn that other foot 90 degrees. So again, check and make sure that that foot turned the right amount. Shouldn't be out to the side or back behind you. It should be straight to the side. Arms stay at shoulder level. Heel back, toes forward, but keep those hips to the front. So make sure you're reaching those hips back toward the back of the neck. And then again, join at the front of your thigh is where we're pivoting from. So push, 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 keep those arms right across from each other. Palms facing the direction you're facing. And pivot, 
like your fixed-wing aircraft with those arms staying across your chest. Front knee stays straight, back knee stays straight, and get those arms as across from each other as you can. So the hand can be in front of your ankle or behind you, whatever is good for your body. The head reaching to the side, and you can still be halfway into that pivot if that's where your body is. It doesn't matter. Just keep things nice and straight. And again, if you like that front body opening a little bit more, you can bring that hand down. Or you can leave it up. It's your personal practice. So again, this hip is at the hip joint, pivoted, and your body is stretching open. And then with the hand back in the air, if you've moved it, lead your body back up, palms toward the floor, feet to the front, find your star position, and release. And back into mountain pose. So as you get back to mountain pose, just take a moment, noticing how that side of your body is feeling. And then stretch up, and we're going to go all the way down to the mat. So of course, we're going to do child's pose just for our transition. Pad where you need to, ankles, or heels and hips, or wherever, under your forehead, if that's important for you. And just relax, let that spine get a good stretch. So notice that we're releasing those hips that we were working as we went into those pivots. So again, just take a moment and breathe. And then inhale and come up. We're going to be on our knees for this next one, hands and knees. We're going to go into gate pose. I'm going to turn around, but you can stay facing your mat. I just think it's easier for you to see what I'm doing if we do this. So if the surface beneath you is hard and you want some padding under your knees, you can use one of those garden cushions under your knees, or you can fold your mat if you've got a mat, or you can put a pillow or something under it. You want your knees hip width apart, so heels right under your hips, and then we're going to come all the way up onto our knees. And first we're going to go into table position because I think it's a little easier to get your leg out, but you don't have to do that if you can just fling your leg out. So come into table position with your wrists under your shoulders and your back nice and flat, knees right under your hips, and then bring one foot out to the side and it's going to line up with your other arch with your other knee. And then walk your hands back and up your leg. If you want to, from the kneeling position, you could just put that leg out. But I think it's a little bit easier to make sure it gets into that correct position if you start in table position. So get that leg out with the arch and the knee lined up. That hand goes along the knee. Again, hips and shoulders face the front. We're going to go into side stretch on this side. So I've got a check going over if it sounds noisy, sorry. Arm out to the side, palm up, arm over your shoulder, and then slide to the side and open up through the ribs. So this side contracts and this side opens. And you're going straight to the side. You have the head about the same area ear next to your arm, arm next to your ear, and you keep reaching your head and your fingertips in the same direction. And just keep sliding this hand along the leg as far as you want it to go, and breathe and relax. So you can keep sliding further and further as long as you're not leaning forward as you do it. So breathe, extend through that side, getting those ribs nice and open and stretched out, and this side nice and contracted because you're not twisting, you're going straight to the side as you relax into this gate position. And then inhale, sliding back up, arm out, palm to the floor, and down, and then back into table to flip that knee in, or you can just bring it in if you want to stay just on your knees. So again, positioning, getting your spine nice and straight, bring your other foot back. And again, align the arch and the knee on that foot, toes to the front. Hands walk back and up your leg, and make sure those hips are even, shoulders are even, facing forward. 
Again, the arm goes down your leg, other arm out, shoulder up. Palm toward the ceiling and bring that arm right above your shoulder. So slide over to the side, no twisting. Keep reaching your head and your hand in the same direction in the air. And feel those ribs stretch apart on the side you're leaning away from. So maximize or minimize, remember, personal practice. You may find one side works easier than the other. Remember, habitual use of your body. Make the sides of your body work differently. That's okay, just be aware. And again, just relax, sliding deeper or not, doing what's right for your body as you move into that lateral motion. And again, deepen or not, it's your choice. Feel this side contract, the other side stretch. Feel your spine keep lengthening and keep breathing nice and deeply. And then sliding back up, exhale the arm to the side, palm toward the floor, and down. And again, go ahead and go into your table to flip that leg in or just bring it back in. And again, sink back on your heels and come into a nice little child's pose or a little transition. So take a moment there and breathe. Relax, feel your spine, feel the release through your hips. And then when you're ready, inhale up and we're going to start in staff position. So bring your body to a seated position, sitting bones down, legs extended, hips, kneecaps up, ankles, toes up, full bottom of your foot pressing away, and hips, shoulders up with the crown reaching toward the ceiling, spine nice and straight. So don't forget to get that lower back supported with your ribs in and up to keep that core active to support your spine and through the lower back. So we're going to go into a wide leg position. So just shift your legs as wide apart as you want. Some people will be wider, some people will be closer. It's remember, personal practice of your body determines what you do. So kind of lift yourself up, push your sitting bones back, and get into that little pelvic tilt so that you've got a little bit more opening through the hips as you do that. You can also put padding behind you, remember, to keep that angle so that your sitting bones are a little bit forward. And we're going to go into a side stretch once again. So just relax through the knees, get them as close toward the floor as feels comfortable. Think about the kneecaps tightening up toward the front of your thighs and the front of your thighs tightening a little bit too. If the back of your legs is really uncomfortable pressing down toward the floor. Keep the heels and toes pressing away evenly so those toes stay up, kneecaps stay up toward the ceiling so you want those legs to keep position correctly. And then bring your arms to your sides and out to shoulder level. Turn your palms up and bring your arms over your shoulders. So stretch it up and then exhale, bringing your hands down toward your shoulders. So you're reaching from your sitting bones through your head and fingertips as you inhale and stretch up. And then exhale, hands down. And then inhale and stretch up. And then exhale and turn toward one foot. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, so pivot your whole body toward that leg that you're turned toward. Now, kneecap stays up, toes stay up. Your whole body is, again, pivoted at that hip area to face the leg that you're turned toward. And your chest and chin are moving toward your leg, top of your head toward your toes. Your hands can be to your foot or your leg or on the mat, it doesn't matter. So just be relaxing. You want to keep your spine as straight as you can so you don't have to tuck your chin down. We want to keep lengthening with that chin coming forward towards your leg. So relax through the other leg, relax through this leg you're turned toward, and just maximize or minimize into that forward pivot toward the leg. And then the same arm as the leg you're turned toward. Bring that elbow inside the knee and hold your shin or your leg or your toes 
and bring the other arm up to the side. So you're turning your body back to the front. So your body is parallel to that leg that's open to the side, and your arm is up to the side. Bring it to shoulder level, palm up, and bring it toward the ceiling. And then over toward your ear and reach toward your toes, coming into that side stretch a little deeper. So as you're doing that, try to keep both sitting bones down and your head reaching toward your toes along with your fingertips. So your hand may get to your foot or it may not. Just keep it by your ear and stretch it out if that's more comfortable for you. And then you can use the elbow that's inside the knee to kind of push your body into a little bit more twist and look up toward the ceiling if you want to. So breathe and stretch and maximize however much or little your body would like. And then bring the arm up, back to shoulder level, pivot back up, releasing and turn to the front and release. So kind of feel that side that got stretched. Feel your legs maybe a little bit more energized, shall we call it, through the back of your legs and check to make sure that you're still into the front of your sitting bones as you're getting ready to do that other side. So again, lengthen through your spine, hands at your side, shoulders stay down as you bring your hands to shoulder level, turn your palms again toward the ceiling and bring them over your shoulder. So stretch it up and exhale, hands down, sink into your sitting bones. Inhale, stretch up, Exhale, and release. And again, stretch it up. And this time as you exhale, turn to that other leg. Make sure your knees and toes are up toward the ceiling still. Stretch up, pivot at your hips, exhaling. And again, weight with your chest and chin toward the leg. Reach for your leg, foot, floor, wherever. And just maximize into that. Sink down through those sitting bones as much as you can. And just release and relax as you come into that side of motion again. So a little twist through the hips to get you positioned directly over your leg. Knees are up, toes are up, chest and chin toward that leg, top of the head toward the toes, toes pulling back, and your body reaching as much as it wants to the side, keeping your back not so much rounded as stretching. And then the arm that's that leg that you're on, bring the elbow inside the knee, hold your ankle, foot, or toes, and rotate your body to face the front. Bring the shoulder back, bring the arm up, shoulder level, palm toward the ceiling, up, and over by your ear and reach toward your toes or wherever. You can keep reaching that straight or you can deepen into that. Reach for your toes as much as your side motion wants to do. Again, you can press with that elbow into the knee if you want to leverage a little bit more to keep facing the front. And again, you can rotate and look up toward the ceiling for a little bit more twist in that motion. And again, deepen as much or as little as you want into your position. Feel the ribs stretching and the other side contracting as you're in this position. And then leaning with that hand in the air, pull yourself back up and reach it out and back into your wide legged position. Bend your knees. Bring them in, position them straight in front of your hips, stand again into step position. So just kind of shift back and forth on your sitting bones and relax into your straight position. We're going to do one more side stretch. This one is a little balancey, so if you fall over, don't laugh too hard, either at me when I do or at yourself. So go ahead and lay on your mat with your back parallel to the back of your mat. Or if you're on the floor, find a position where you can align yourself nice and straight. Flex your feet, hand in front of your body for a little positioning. And allow, you can have your head down on that arm. 
or you can on the floor or you can bend that elbow and support your head so that your head is on your hand but keep everything parallel and then we're going to keep the hips open and turn your knee up toward the ceiling and pull the foot in onto your thigh as much as you can so get position the more you've got that bottom foot that's still extended straight out flexed the more it helps to support you in your side on the on the on the ground position and then hold your foot or your toe and bring it up toward the ceiling as straight as you can so if you get it too far forward you're going to roll to the front if you get it too far back you're going to roll to the back i used to roll all over the place when i did this so if i do don't laugh too hard at me because i have a really hard time staying on my side in this one so reach out through the bottom of your foot and lengthen through your whole body if your head is still down that's okay too just keep lengthening out to the side and then bend your knee bring that foot down slide it back reposition it and get those feet supporting you i'm going to switch around so i can still face you you can just roll over and, unless you want to see whatever it is you're doing so again align yourself Get the hips nice and even, body to the front, and position yourself. Flex your feet for a little more stability. And again, you can keep your head down, or you can bend your elbow and support your head. Hand in front of you for support, and bend that knee, get that knee going up as much toward the ceiling as you bring the foot onto your inner thigh. Again, you can stay there. This is enough of a balance for you. And if you need to go further, you can hold your toe or your foot. And again, extend that leg as straight up toward the ceiling as you can. So you want to keep the hips as open as possible. And you want to keep maximizing that straightness of your body as you're in this position. So again, try to keep that leg right over your hip so that you're not leaning back or forward and unbalancing yourself into uh, falling out of the position. Again, keep that bottom foot flexed as much as you can for a little extra support. So maximize or minimize, remember, personal practice. And when you're ready to release, bending that knee, bring the foot back to the other leg, slide it down, reposition the hips to the front, and relax. And we're going to go onto our backs real quick. T position for our final twist and relaxation. So press your back down, bend your knees, heels in by your hips, slide the sitting bones toward your heels, and bring those knees up. Roll the knees to the one side while you turn toward the opposite side, shoulders and arms. Sinking there. Knees toward the mat or the floor or toward your elbow if you like that extra low back maximizing. Shoulders and shoulder blades down, middle back twist, head turning, upper back twist. Just maximize or minimize. Remember, personal practice, do what's right for your body. And then heels toward your hips or rolling onto your back. And getting ready for the other side. <clears throat> Again, roll your knees toward the side and turn your head the opposite direction. Once more, keep the shoulders down, keep the knees to the mat or floor as much as you like, or move them in the direction of your elbow if you like that extra low back. Take a breath. Just relax, head turning as much or as little as your neck needs. And again, maximize or minimize, do what's right for your body. And when you're ready to release, heels toward your hips and roll them back onto your back. Bring your feet to the floor, extend out, pat under your knees if you need a little release through your lower back this morning, or just extend into corpse position. 
And again, just release and relax for that whole torso. We did a lot of spine and side work today. So breathe into it. Exhale, just relax. Hands, palms up slightly away from your hips, letting your shoulders and shoulder blades release down. And just let your spine be however it needs to be to be comfortable in your relaxation position. Soften your legs, your hips, your torso. Relax your shoulders, your neck, your jaw. Release any tension in your body and just let it sink deeper into that surface beneath you. Each exhalation will let your body grow heavier, sinking deeper. And just let Mother Earth support your body as you release awareness of it from your mind. And as you breathe more deeply, just exhale any thoughts coming to your attention. There's no need to remember the past, no need to worry about the future. Just let the thoughts drift in and out as easily as your breath. There's no need to focus on the content of any thought. Just let them go. They'll keep coming, and you can just keep releasing. And as your thoughts flow more easily in and out, just allow your attention to le release the content completely and allow the awareness to turn inward, filling with peace through your mind through your body, just being peace. And feel free to keep relaxing this morning if that feels good for you. Or begin drawing energy and awareness back to the body, to your moment, to your room. And as you breathe more deeply, begin moving your body gently. Give yourself a good stretch if you want one. Or just move fingers and toes and arms and calves, and legs and feet, wherever you need. Press your back down, bend your knees, draw your heels in. Give yourself a hug as much as you would like this morning to appreciate your yoga work and your body's work every day for you. And when you've had enough yoga appreciation and hug, you can release, rolling to the side, and sitting back up to prepare for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me.